Jan. Uh, I will now give my presentation, which will be a little different from what we have just heard, which will be a little technical talk. I am from um, CSIR Institute of Minerals Materials Technology. We have been working on urban mining, but today's talk will be mostly on LIB. Uh, the spent LIB, how uh, this can be utilized. One is, as talked about that, it is, it is important also to see that how uh, once this uh, material which is, uh, which we are actually able to get it back into its parent form or not, whether they are reusable, whether we, uh, we can put them back into the battery and the performance is same. So we are working on, on that, that technology. So we do make, uh, do get back the original material and then we do test in the uh, making of the battery. Like mostly we are working on lithium ion <coughs> batteries and uh, I'll just uh, uh, talk about that. So this uh, shows that how the lithium ion battery technology is advancing. We all know that there are quite a few technologies based on the cathode. Anode is mostly graphite. People have now come up with silicon, but that is coming. Some of the batteries are on silicon today. Uh, mostly in mobile phone, but uh, uh, the anode is graphite. And then we have LiFpO4, uh, which is on iron phosphide. Then we have all cobalt oxide or NMC, nickel, um, and uh, manganese and cobalt, uh, and only cobalt. So there are different variation of cathode material where the most of your metal values are lying, which is lithium, number one. India do not have the reserve of lithium, very little bit, which doesn't work out as a mineral. And then cobalt also similar, similar way, do not have a great reserve of cobalt. So both of them, if you have a battery manufacturer here in India, lithium to be brought back, brought from, uh, from Australia or from Chile, uh, uh, or cobalt also from Africa, all the African countries that we know, uh, they are producing Gabon or, <coughs> or uh, Gambia or, or Nigeria. The, they are giving Congo a whole lot of uh, cobalt to the whole countries. But most of the mines are, many of the mines are taken by China, many of the mines are taken by Indian as well. So that is the source. So, the, so as I said, that source, um, if India is paying al already price for the source that is coming from somewhere else, and then we should keep it within the country, that next time when I'm manufacturing a battery unit here, that I'm using my own cobalt, which I already paid for. I am pay I'm using my lithium, which I already paid for. Okay, if we get it, if it go out of the country as a black mass, and then somebody else is manufacturing that somewhere else, and he is bringing up with a value addition, uh, which is important, and then he's taking from you in one rupees and selling you to in hundred rupees, hundred time cost, and you are paying for that. We are only doing it, so that is important. So, if you go to the next, uh, we are showing that how this manufacturing is going to increase every day uh, from 2018, uh, whether China, Europe, and North America and other places, how this uh, this is increasing. Uh, the production capacity of gigawatt hour, okay, and uh, how uh, the different production of cathodes are also increasing, different means I talked about LCO, NMC, or NCA, or LMO, or uh, LFP. And on the right-hand side of the slide, we are showing that for the e-mobility, the electronic and conventional vehicles, what are the difference of the different material that you can see the blue, that whole lot of nickel, cobalt, lithium is not there in your uh, automobile today, whereas they are going to be added. And so uh, these are the things, the change, changes that, that are going to be there in e-mobility, and that's very important to uh, look forward. So that is how the we all talked about, I don't want to spend, that we require recycling to be done. And there are a lot of opportunities that today it could be about 60 gigawatt hour of uh, storage uh, lithium ion battery storage, which will go up to 600 gigawatt hour of storage when we go to 2030 in India itself. So, and with e-mobility al already in place, you go out in any city, big cities, you will see a lot of e-vehicle running, whether it's a two-wheeler or four-wheeler. And it will really compound to accelerate and more and more two-wheeler and four-wheeler into the market. 
and you are going to get a big chunk of uh, battery which will be refurbished and reused in some other sector and end of life they need to be tackled environmentally because you just cannot be used for landfill as well as we talked about the precious material that is already there in this lithium ion battery which is lithium and cobalt and also aluminium uh, foil and copper foil which can be also be reused okay so there are typically three routes which is taken by different companies like pyrometallurgy, which you are actually melting everything and then taking back the important metal out of it, leaving the other uh, gang and then uh, uh, and, uh, and using it for landfill landfilling. These gives a lot of poisonous gas out as well as it's energy intensive. So pyro is the oldest route, but I think it is not a prescribed route. Hyd pyro hydro is a combination and better than only pyro and the hydro if you can do it hydrometallurgy that means you are using a green acid or green technology acid is like a not you are using a inorganic acid but organic acid which is not so uh, strong but at the same time let's say oxalic acid at the same time it does separate uh, your uh, metals or that that soluble solubilize your metal so the hydrometallurgy is the route to move forward with a green um, technology with a zero discharge using organic acid and things like that. So that is what people have come forward that that's most popular in terms of the if you see the environmental friendliness as well as the material that you get out of it and the cost effectiveness because you're not using a uh, very high temperature process which you require for pyrometallurgy, hydro, hydro pyro of course is a combination of that. At the right hand side it shows that different way of the, the yellow one is pyrometallurgy, then the hydrometallurgy, the, the, uh, the blue and the green is a normal process that you mine and then you do s s some uh, usual route of extraction to make the metal or a material that you required and then you put in the battery and then uh, the cycle which is, which is the green and the, the, the gray is the one which you intermittently you can refurbish and then reuse it without totally destructing the uh, components that is also is possible and we have been working on it that means I do not rip apart the whole battery but I take out the cathode part I uh, do some processing that same cathode can be put back into the lithium ion battery not segregating lithium or cobalt or manganese and nickel from it so these are the ways to look at and you can see that if I see the um, among all of them, the cost, energy, water requirement, emission, and socks, and all of these, you can see the direct uh, uh, process by which I'm taking part of it, which is the conceptually, it is exist, and we also have a technology for that, but no one has implemented, but that is to go, go forward from here partially, whenever you have a uh, the quality of the battery is not so bad, but you want to recycle part of it. That is the strategy one could go. You can see in the, every parameter, cost, energy, water, GHG emission, and SOX, everywhere the, the gray, the route which I'm talking about is partially taking away the material and refurbishing and putting it in bat is the best in all, all respect. And hydrometallurgy is the second best in that way, okay? And so uh, there are a whole lot of synthesized cathode material that we worked on is mentioned. And I don't want to go to the detail of it, but I just wanted to point out. And then there are other is issues like fluoride is there, phosphide is there. And you have to tackle those things. This fluoride cannot be just left in, into the landfill. Okay. So uh, we have a couple of uh, uh, technologies. This is just to give a plan that how uh, a recycler works and how it um, uh, how it is so important. One important part is that we are also working on segregation of different kind of batteries. If I get a battery of different chemistry, uh, one is to, from the barcode, you find out that how these different chemistries are, your uh, process can be different. If you are not just producing simply a black char or black mass, um, one is to do that, another is to uh, do through X-ray analysis to segregate the battery chemistry and then do the different type of circuits for different type of chemistry or um, that we are working on, okay? So there are three technologies that is in tier three and four and five level, which I have just mentioned here that uh, we, uh, we are all working, uh, we have developed that NCM, NCA or LCO or, 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 or in a KG scale level, 
uh, in the anode material as well as the cathode material. And uh, when once they have reached out TRL 4 and 5, it is ready to industry to take forward. Because mostly we are an R&D organization and we go up to that level then hand in hand with the industry to take it to TRL 8 or 9 for implementation. So uh, the first one I'm showing is a route of digestion in situ precipitation with this SX solvent extraction process, which is a green route. Uh, we call it FADIPAS with the oxalic acid as, a, uh, as the acid, the organic acid that we are using and this is zero discharge. The next one is fluoride, lithium, cobalt, nickel, full recovery of everything with the hydrometallurgy route. We have mentioned some of the numbers in terms of what solvent you will be used, what reagent will be used, not mentioned, but the cost of them, like uh, our reagent one, two, and three, four, and the final cost that you get per kg. Uh, how, how, what is the amount and what is the cost that you get with the 200 um, the kg of feed. Okay, the, the fourth route is the, the fourth route is uh, this another technology that we have developed and here we have used the product that is being generated, reused it either for the lithium ion battery or for supercapacitors and their performance is exactly same as before. And in the case of supercapacitor also, we get a very good performance by using the anode material, the graphite that we have generated. A lot of people are not putting any effort on the, on the anode material. So we have, although the graphite is very cheap, easily available, but we have got the graphite back. We found out that graphite is in high quality, high surface area, high conductivity, and that can be used for supercapacitor application. And so we have shown that, which I mentioned. So with this, I end, and I just, they showed that what is the capability of CSI Institute of Minerals and Materials Technology in terms of spent LIB. Actually, I want to say that we have started working in it in 2012 when, the, when Nissan came to us in 2012 to work on their battery technology, which we don't know at that time what technology they were working on. They gave us the black mass. Uh, uh, in the battery they have uh, developed for the Nissan electric vehicle and then they told us that we want these to be separated. We did that and we just had a 12 months of project. We have uh, part and parcel, they have taken up, taken back everything and we have NDA with them or NDC with them that we cannot give that technology to anybody. So these technologies that I've talked about it totally different from what we gave it to Nissan and Nissan prob probably using it, they don't tell us not, we have not published, we have not patented, they have not published or patented. Many of them don't even patent their technology because they want to be keep it within themselves because Nissan has a big program as, as you all see worldwide in an electric, electric vehicle from the long time, last 15 years. Uh, Nissan has a uh, electric vehicle program in all all form of electric vehicles. So we have that, but now we have a different set of technologies which I've just mentioned, and we'll, we'll be looking forward to have a participation with the industry and move forward. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> application, and so we have shown that, which I mentioned. So with this, I end, and I just they showed that what is the capability of CSI Institute of Minerals and Materials Technology in terms of spent LIB. Actually, I want to say that we have started working in it in 2012 when, the, when Nissan came to us in 2012 to work on their battery technology, which we don't know at that time what technology they were working on. They gave us the black mass. Uh, uh, in the battery they have uh, developed for the Nissan electric vehicle and then they told us that we want these to be separated. We did that and we just had a 12 months of project. We have uh, part and parcel, they have taken up, taken back everything and we have NDA with them or NDC with them that we cannot give that technology to anybody. So these technologies that I've talked about are totally different from what we gave it to Nissan and Nissan prob probably using it, they don't tell us not, we have not published, we have not patented, they have not published or patented. Many of them don't even patent their technology because they want to be keep it within themselves because Nissan has a big program as, as you all see worldwide in an electric, electric vehicle from the long time, last 15 years. Uh, Nissan has a uh, electric vehicle program in all, all form of electric vehicles. So we have that, but now we have a different set of technologies which I've just mentioned, and we'll, we'll be looking forward to have a participation with the industry and move forward. Thank you. Uh, we move to the next presenter. Uh, our next presenter is Professor Prasenjit Mandal uh, from IIT Roorkee.
and uh, Dr. Mandel, please.